So I'm going to go ahead and start the meeting. Um, from yeah. what I see, Jackie is on, I think, and myself and Janet and Denise. Hi, Joan. Um, Tammy, John, Judy, Mary, Sinkus, Gary Griffin. Okay, Gary, you're on. Okay, good. We weren't sure if, if Gary could join us and Scott. I'm going to call the meeting to order. It is four o'clock, April 12th. And Tammy is staying over at the country club in case we have somebody walk in as a guest. Um, Tammy, can you tell us if we have anybody there? There is not anybody here, Deb. Okay, good, good. Okay, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. And the first thing is number one, the minutes were approved and sent to Tammy. Um, so that was, that's taken care of from last month. This month, we're gonna start with the amenity reports. And I'm gonna start, I got two. I have Branchwood and the Branchwood Trail. And then I also am doing Lock Loman right now. Um, Branchwood is in great shape, no problems at all. The colors are fabulous if you want to go for a beautiful walk. Um, the overall condition was great. The playground was clean. There was no trash or anything. One of the trash cans was missing a lid, but that's probably blown away. And, and I've talked with John about that. Um, areas of review. Number one, the reservations have been really good, but they've also expanded those from 10 people, I believe, Jessica. Outstanding. Okay, 15. I gotta go. Have, thank you. Tom, did you want to say something? No. Nope. Oh, very sorry, I was on uh, trying to get it off a call. No problem. Anyway, the a number of reservations has increased from 10 to 15 now, so it's going to make it easier for people to uh, get into workout and, and to swim. Um, the porta potty needed some attention, and I've taken care of that. The pickleball courts are almost ready. Um, they are. There's two more steps to be done, and people are kind of biting at the bullet to get to them. But anyway, they're they're very very close to getting done. Um, as for Lock Loman Area Park, I went over there. It was very busy, lots of dogs. They weren't in the dog park, however. They were on the ball diamond running around. So who knows why. Um, bathrooms were in great shape, no problem there. And the trail was in good shape. So, and that's my amenity for Lock Loman. So let's go next. We've got Scott. I believe Scott's on. Maybe. Thanks, Debbie. So Reardon Hall is uh, still in good condition. Not much change there, except they did reduce the uh, distance between the exercise equipment from 12 feet to six feet uh, per the recent CDC social distancing guidelines. Uh, reservation process is still in, in place. Uh, Kingsdale Pavilion's in good condition. I did see kind of like Debbie saw one of the trash can lids is missing. Um, the deck around the main pool is finished. It looks really good. Uh, looks like they're ready to start installing the fencing there. So that project looks like it's on progress very well. Um, tennis courts and center in good condition. Uh, tennis center is back to its normal operating schedule. It's open eight to one and then one to four or it closed one to four and then open again four to eight. Um, tennis court usage when I went out there is very high. Lots of people out there using the tennis courts. Um, did finally get a chance to talk to Jake. Um, he mentioned that they're going to be resurfacing courts three and four. Um, they've got so a lot of long continuous splits in the playing surface. So look, he was looking forward to getting those done. Um, Kingsdale Playground's in good shape. A lot of the items that I noted previously are repaired or replaced, uh, with the exception of one trash can lid out there that's still broken. Uh, basketball court's still in good shape. Uh, but the shuffleboard deck, the paint starting to wear out a little bit. Looks like it could use a fresh coat of paint. Uh, mini golf course, uh, the, the changes there are in progress. Uh, looks like all the old carpeting has been removed. Some of the holes have some new carpeting installed. 
Um, others look like they're in the process of being fixed before the carpeting goes down. So it's looking good. Uh, also repairing some of the sidewalks around the holes. So that amenity should look really good once they get finished with that. It's, it's showing some really good progress. Um, Jake did have a couple of things that he wanted me to bring up both to the committee and to the POA board. Um, still raising a concern that Bella Vista continues to be the only tennis facility in Northwest Arkansas that doesn't have any indoor courts or enclosed facilities. And the other one was that he wanted to ask again about the lighting system at the tennis courts. Uh, he mentioned that, you know, the halogen light bulbs are very expensive at startup almost like $15 every time you start one of those. And then the bulbs don't last very long. They, they burn out pretty quickly. So wanting to know if we could look again at the possibility of having LED lighting uh, at the tennis courts, which then would also make sense to do the same thing over at the pool. So if you want me to bring that up, just ask about that. Um, question for Joan before I do the next part is, are the horseshoe pits still being maintained at Reardon? No, they're not. Okay, then no. the horseshoe pit that um, we really utilize are at the beach at Lake Avalon. Okay, are those going to be removed then, or are they just left the way they are? Um, I, you're the first person that's brought those up in years. We can check that out if if that needs to be, but um, no one has utilized those in years. So okay. I'll just leave it in my report then. I won't report on it here to the group. Um, other than that, um, the other question is on the mini golf course. I noticed there were some other broken sidewalks. Are they going to be fixing all of those? I'm assuming they probably just didn't get to them or something. Say that again. I think I didn't hear you. Joan, you're on mute. I know. It's, uh, I was having difficulty getting off mute. Uh, are you talking about Scott, the Kingsville mini golf again? Yes. Yes. Um, we did a bunch of repairs. We can't do them all this year. It's very, very expensive. Okay. But there are some cracks that are not um, detrimental or anything. We'll look to do those in future years. Uh, okay. if you want to use the all right. Very good. That helps me to know. Thanks. All right, Debbie, that's all I got. Good, thank you. We'll move on to Jackie, or no, Denise, I'm sorry, Denise. Hi, everyone. Um, this is for Tyree Park. I was there uh, actually on Easter Sunday morning because I wanted to see how busy the park was. And there was actually quite a bit of activity going on there. Um, the restrooms are still locked and I was wondering when those will be unlocked because I don't think we're gonna have any more freezing weather this year. So I just was more curious than anything else. Um, they are unlocked now. We were waiting on a deep cleaning that needed to be done. Gotcha. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, so they should, they sh the part of potty was obviously, it was clean. Um, the doggy bags were full. The pavilion area was fine and very clean. Um, grass was mowed, everything looked good, no trash laying around. There were actually a fair number of trucks with trailers in the lot. It was a nice day, so people were out. And then there were two men that were fishing from the shore. Um, I did run into a, a man that, I, that was there two months ago with his son, and he was setting up a big tent for an Easter barbecue there with about seven or eight people for the holiday. So we have a very happy repeat customer. He's there all the time brings his kid to play on the playground and he's there picnicking. So um, he really had no comments for improvements. He, his comment, well, he did have one and I saw it myself. The trash cans there were really full and to overflowing. And I don't know how often they're emptied, but because obviously the park is being used more often, I think they need to be emptied a, a little more often at this point. Um, the only other comment I have for an area for review is the main sign at the entry when you turn in is an older style Bella Vista wooden sign that has a lot of dry rot on it. And the footers, the concrete footers have pretty much eroded out of the ground. It's not going to take much to knock that sign over or have it 
fall down. And I was wondering if anything like that has been addressed as far as replacing some of these older signs at these facilities. Yeah, Denise, I can jump in on that one. Uh, we're, we actually uh, are, are coming up with a solution. Uh, we, uh, we are designing or have designed a new sign to replace the one at Metfield, similar one where a lot of, you know, wood and was rotting out. So we now have a template to follow because uh, we have a lot of those signs everywhere. Yeah, I, yeah, I know it. Okay, just curious. That one is particularly bad. It would take a very small gust of wind to knock that sign down. Um, no, and, true enough. and that's really about it. It was in good shape and I'm glad to see it's um, a lot more people are, are using the park. Thank you, Denise. Uh, Jackie. Let me know if you hear background noise. I've got pressure washing going on in the back and I'll tell them to ask them to stop if it bothers y'all. Mm -hmm. um, Lake Ann and the RV storage. RV storage is fine. Didn't have any members there when I went through there. Lake Ann, uh, everything looks good. Uh, picked up, maintained. Uh, nothing really to review as far as needs. Did have member interaction with a father-son fishing and asked them what they liked about it. And they can bring their dog there. And he said he can tuck away with his son in the cove back at where the Pinion Creek runs into it. And they just love it, love it there. Um, did do a couple of member counts at the um, at Lake Ann and um, Trailhead's quite busy uh, this uh, throughout the week and on the weekends. Uh, eight cars is kind of the average of when sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Have some runners and some hikers uh, also going through the trailhead over there. Um, and then people using the picnic uh, area and fishing on the source, se several uh, vehicles with boat trailers as well. So um, I also picked up Metfield while, uh, because um, Scotty left us until we decide to, how we're gonna reallocate that. And that is a, um, as she always reported before, it's a very busy location. I did some head counts there on three different occasions and I'm sure that the Branchwood pickleball courts will be in heavy demand because the pickleball count, the three times I went was 22, 16 and 17. And we can play a maximum there of 12. So we're always sitting out waiting to rotate. So um, very active there. The playground and picnic area had a head count of 37 and 29. We were out of town Easter, didn't count there, but yesterday it was packed with 63 people. And that's wow. every every area, the uh, open air picnic table by the basketball court, the two single covered tables, a little pavilion with two tables, and then the big pavilion had two parties going on up there, plus the bike track was being used, uh, just used all over. Member interactions, I easy to do there. There's a lot of people there. Uh, one of the moms said, please don't cut down this tree. And y'all probably know which tree they're talking about, but the kids use that evergreen back around the corner as a little fort in there. And they love it. Every time I've been there, there's been two or three kids at least climbing and looking around in there. They love it. Um, also said um, the grandkids uh, love this and can't wait for the pool to open up. Um, the one, one person had a recommendation for there seems to be slides for little kids, but it'd be nice if they had a bigger one, but very complimentary of the playground equipment says it's new and it's well maintained. Uh, the only negative um, that uh, uh, is not a, probably too much of a surprise right now, but pretty much 80% of who I talked out talks about the mini golf course and about it being gone and they miss it. Mm. It would go there and you know, it's close by and they miss it. And of course I talk about the other one being uh, ready to open up soon and that it'd be great and that it's going to be an 18 hole. So, but great member interaction, great use there. The only thing I guess that I don't know when you decide to shut heaters off in the bathroom, but it was on fire yesterday because the heater was on and it was a, a warm day. Uh, but besides that, um, that about wraps it up. Didn't see anything really that needed attention for maintenance. Good. Any questions? Good, thank you, Jackie. Uh, Val is not here today, so we'll skip on and to Janet. Yeah, um, I went to Tanyard Creek this morning and there were 
not as many people obviously as there are on weekends, but it, it's building. Um, everything looked immaculate. The only concern I guess that I have, and I'm sure you guys are gonna keep an eye on it, is that some of the shrubbery uh, around that planted area, uh, close to the parking lot looks like it may be having some trouble greening up. And um, I don't know if you, if um, maintenance is planning to like, just cut it down and see if it springs back to life. But there's appears to be quite a bit of damage uh, on that. Not my horticultural expert opinion, but it's uh, it, it there there's some concern. Um, lots of people were there using the trail. Uh, there were two families sitting on the grass, not using the pavilion, but having picnic and enjoying themselves, and said that that's really their family time is to come to Tanyard Creek that, uh, you know, the, when things get busy, uh, they try and just gather everybody up and, and use that. The, the grills and everything were just spotless. Um, a number of people uh, were using, <clears throat> excuse me, the bike trail as well. So uh, Tanya, is superb. I went to uh, Lake Avalon Beach and uh, it again was spotless. In fact, there was somebody, uh, one of the maintenance staff out there power washing the picnic tables and, uh, you know, taking care of all the uh, places to be for seating. Uh, went down, there were a couple of trailers in the, in the back area and um, no trash, no nothing. Uh, people, I did see two people that I couldn't get to them in time, got out of the cars to use um, the new trailhead. I guess it's a trailhead, but you know what I'm talking about. So I think I think uh, it's all just going along super. So that's it. Well, thank you, Debbie, uh, come Terry. Make, Debbie, can I make a comment about tenured before we move off of that? Yep, you sure may. Um, the, when you park in the parking lot and go on the path from the parking lot down to the pavilion before you start on the trail, that asphalt area is really uh, torn up and there's a lot of little holes in it. And um, I walk there pretty frequently with my parents in their eighties and we have to really be careful when we go on that, just that little short stretch between the parking lot and the, and the main sidewalk. It's just really rough and uh, deteriorating. I didn't see that. Thank you, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Thank you, Jackie. Um, Gary, I think it looks like Gary might be on. There you are. Hi, Gary. You're muted. I'm off and on, so. There you uh, go. All right. Uh, the gun ranges. Overall condition is still excellent at both of them. Uh, they look really sharp. Uh, there's a little slowdown at the rifle and pistol range. Uh, although when I was there, the, the uh, rifle range was almost completely full. Spoke with Royce, uh, the, the range master. Uh, it's been pretty consistent. Uh, one thing is the picnic area is not finished yet. And we thought that'd be done uh, by now with the barbecue is. And uh, he believes that any slowdown that's happening there is just because of a lack of ammunition. Otherwise they'd be even busier. So. I went out this past Saturday, and uh, so I got some good feedback from him. Uh, went over to uh, Trap and Skeet, spoke with Carol as well. It was extremely busy on Saturday. 
I mean, there, by the time I got there at three o'clock, there was like 78 people that had already been out there. And uh, people were still pulling up. And on Sunday, they had an ATA tournament that was supposed to have over 100 individuals shooting. Wow. So it's been quite busy out there. It's uh, got a good revenue base that's been building up. And Carol seems to think that it's only going to get busier as we move into the summer. Uh, one of the things that I've, I've noticed um, when you have 100 people out there shooting, uh, that's pretty tough for one guy in his 70s to take care of. You know, he's got to continue to reload the traps, and, and it, it's, um, it's, it is quite a bit of work. So he, he would love to get a little part-time help when, those, when, when the tournaments come around. And uh, that is it. Any questions for Gary? Okay, um, I have Chris's report and it's concerning London Park. He said everything is in excellent condition. The restrooms were all clean and orderly. Um, but the fish guts bucket was full. <laughs> um, Areas of concern, just talked to a couple launching kayaks. They were very happy with the whole situation. And trucks and empty boat trailers filled the parking lot. Uh, a couple of folks were launching kayaks also. So he was very pleased and, and everything seemed to be in order. Any other questions at all? The agenda, I've got the meet and greet. Our next meet and greet will be May 15th. It will be via Zoom, and we will start promoting it very, very soon. Um, I'll talk with Judy and Kim and, and get that into the e-blast. Any further discussion on the amenities? I have a just a general question. This is Denise. Um, do we have any idea of the number of users at these amenities? For example, the reason why I'm asking is on the trails, they have these sensors that will read your cell phone number and they do a count. So they have some idea of the number of trail users. Do we have any interest in it? And is it worth, is it, worth it or are, is there a use for the data for us to track how many people are actually using the amenities just to have some idea of budget or people or resources or something? Does that make any sense to anyone? Tom, you wanna chime in on this or? We're gonna have Joan jump in on this one. Okay. Um, Denise, it's a good point. We do keep stats at the places that are quote unquote easier to keep stats. So we have stats at Reardon and Branchwood and of course Metfield, Tennis Center, all those. And we report those monthly um, and they are helpful. We do that at the swimming pools, the beach and all that. Um, where it gets harder, as you can imagine, is say a Tyree Park, where unless you have a counter, um, you know, we don't have any staff that can track that. So um, we don't we don't get a lot of requests for that, um, but that's kind of where we're at now. Yeah, I just wondered if it had ever been discussed. I know, for example, at Tanyard, it's being loved to death. The trails are starting to erode. Yes. You know, it's, it, it needs more support than what it's getting. And I think we'd actually be shocked at how many people are using these amenities, the places that are a little more difficult to count, like at Tanyard or Tyree or any of the parks where there's boat launches. I think we'd just be blown away at how many people are actually using them. And I just, it was more of a discussion topic than anything else. Denise, I agree with you, particularly at Tanyard. And as I've said in the past, people have requested more bathrooms. Um, when you get 100 people on the trail uh, or fanned out, as the case may be, it, and that it has, of course, withstood a lot more visitation over the winter than we, I think, typically see. But I can't help but think that it wouldn't be useful that some kind of 
data, even if like I, somebody would sit there all day long and count cars or count people or um, I think I think it's going to be important the more development there is in Bella Vista and the fact that our amenities, especially the ones that don't have a fee associated with them, um, are accessed by, you know, the larger Benton County and Northwest Arkansas population. So I think it's something to give more consideration to in terms of options. Yeah, it, I, it's more for the future kind of yeah. thing yes. about how do we support those amenities? Again, yeah. it's like tenure that's being kind of overrun sometimes. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Any other comments? I'm going to move on to the new business concerning the committee administration. One of the things that... Um, Chris had is that new member selection. He has passed on two different applications to us. I believe there's going to be at least three openings. And you, you both have, re, or you've all received both ap, um, applications. Tom, if you correct me, but now is not the time for us to add a new member. We have to wait, correct? No, no, we prefer that you do it ahead of time. I mean, you can add a person and then their term starts in June. Um, okay. But we would okay. we would prefer that there not be this one or two month drop down in number of members and then add back up. We'd rather you okay. be prepared now, uh, either get the renewals in uh, or get the replacements approved so that we're at 100% come June. Okay, okay. Well, we have two applications and we have a Mary Elizabeth Jones, and we have a Devin Johnson. And is there any discussion? Um, I was the one that introduced Mary called me and I was very, very impressed with her application in her cover letter. Um, she is working, but her boss has definitely said that she will be allowed to join in on the group um, on our Monday meetings. And um, feel very strong that I, I felt that her application had some very positive things in it. Does anyone have any discussion about either Mary or Devin? Well, I would say, I mean, do we want to vote for them today? Tom, you're saying we should go ahead and try to see if we could get them approved so that they could join us as of July 1st. You could do it this month. Uh, you could do it next month. Uh, either one would work fine. It's really up to the committee on how they want to do it. Uh, you know, we normally recommend you send out their applications to every committee member so that every committee member is making an informed decision. And their applications have come out. Um, Chris has sent them out. Um, Chris's biggest concern today was that we would not have a quorum, but we do. Uh, Gary was able to join us. So we have six of us today. So we do have a quorum. Um, would the group like to vote today? Would you like to put it off for another month? Please, you know, give me some feedback. This is Gary. I think um, I would like to hold off for one more month to see what other applications or potential applications we may have. Um, if we can, if we've got three, uh, you said three open slots? I believe at least, I know we have at least two, if not three. Okay. Um, well, I know we have three, myself and Val and, um, oh, what's the name of the gal that just left? Scotty. Yeah, Scotty. Scotty. So that we definitely have three openings. That's just my input. Second that, Gary, I, I think that if we could see if there would be maybe more applications come in, um, how does the rest of the group feel? Debbie, are we considering having them come into the meeting so we could interview them, discuss with them at all, or are we 
we're just going to go strictly off her application. I, you know, we've done it off the application since Zoom. Um, last year we had people come in, I believe, um, but we don't know what's going to happen next month. You know, I'd assume we may be meeting in person. Um, uh, Deb, we can um, we can have them come and join this, even if it's in a Zoom format. Yes. To be able to present themselves. I mean, Denise had had to do that as well as Scotty, you know. So yeah, uh, I think it'd be good for us to be able to get a good feel for the individuals, um, and just ask them like the same two or three questions. Okay. okay. Well, Have we posted our requests in like the POA letters for those positions? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I. I think if we post it again with a cutoff date of, say, May 1st, then have them come in for the May meeting, and then we vote at the May meeting, gives us time to gather more um, candidates. Okay. Tom, is there a need for us to vote on this, or do we just go ahead and, and I don't think we need to vote on this, nope. do we? No need to vote. Uh, we'll take care of that. We'll include, make sure we include that in the next e-blast uh, with okay. the uh, May 1st cutoff date. Uh, that'll okay. work for all the committees. Um, and as long as you get it done in, in May, that'll be perfect. And then those recommendations go to the board and the board has final call on those. Good. Then we will go ahead and have them join us for the next meeting and hopefully they'll be able to, and maybe we'll have more than two applications. Um, committee leadership consideration was another thing that Chris wanted to discuss, and he is president this year. I don't know what his feelings will be about being president. I am co-chair this year, or not president, I'm sorry, chairman. I am co-chair, but I my time has run out. So I am um, no longer on the board, so someone needs to step up if there is interest to be chairman or co-chair um, or vice chair. And I think at this point, maybe that discussion, uh, we can hold off till next month as well. So the, the discussion regarding who chair is would take place in June, because that's when the new committee members would then be eligible to vote as to who's in charge, who's going to be the chair. Okay. And that new chair would take over July one. June. June one. Okay. Uh, yeah, at the at the meeting that they would they would take over. Okay. Okay. So what we'll do is we will hopefully vote next month, looking at adding the two to three new members that we'll need, and they at that point that will be in May, and at that point we will then vote for chairman and vice chairman, um, and and secretary. And then they will take over as of June 1st. Yeah, and one more thing, Debbie, the best way, you know, we include the uh, the solicitation for volunteers in our e-blast, but really the best way and the most effective way is one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. you know, cornering someone at the gym yeah. that works out a lot. Really, that's the most effective yeah. way. Um, and, and we could, we, we don't know how the board election is gonna go, and so we could we could have four openings. So uh, just be aware. So I would encourage everybody um, try and find Debbie. Try and find your replacement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll just share. Well, I'll just share. Actually, with you. I did the actually, same. Go ahead, yeah. Debbie. Well, <laughs> actually, and, and Mary Ellen or Mary Elizabeth contacted me. She and I've been in touch, but I know she is very excited about the rec committee. And I think she'd be a good member. I have not talked with talked with Devin. Debbie, I, I just wanted to say I'm also planning to rotate out a secretary okay. at that time. So just to let Terry, a vice chair and a chairman. Okay. Good. Any other discussion? I was just gonna make a comment that I agree when you talk to somebody face to face, because I talked to somebody and he was super excited about uh, applying to this uh, committee, but then I think he kind of had a even stronger love for the lakes. I think he's applying for the lakes committee, but he's all gung ho. And I think that um, as we talk face to face, I think that's a real good way to recruit people. 
Yeah. Well, and you can find their their level of interest. They really, it, it comes through. Um, in May, we do have a guest that'll be coming in. Um, Ellen Creekbaum will be talking about a presentation. She has a group that has concerns about Reardon Hall. And I don't know anything further than that other than what's on the notes. Um, and she will be joining us for the May meeting. Any discussion or questions until we get onto the POA staff? Nope. Tom, you want to take it? Go ahead. Well, with the uh, weather being so perfect, uh, we are busy everywhere. Uh, year to date rounds are up by uh, 2000 over prior year, which is outstanding. Also considering that we lost a large portion of February due to the weather. F and B is really doing well. I was speaking with Tommy earlier today and, uh, uh, we're at or we're approaching budget on uh, almost everything and we're only halfway through. So uh, all the outlets are very busy. Uh, boat registrations are up 19% over prior year. So we wow. are just busy all the way around. The only thing that's lagging right now is the activity cards. Uh, they're not the registration on those or we're, we're not registering them as quickly as we did last year. So I'm a little bit concerned if it's weather or it's, you know, um, you know, they got it for the first year of the 2020 plan and they uh, decided not to renew. I'm, I'm just a little concerned that that number is going to drop this year. Uh, so that's the only thing that's really of concern right now, but everywhere else we're just busy all the way around. Tom, you mentioned F and B. What is F and B? Food and beverage. Okay, thank you. The restaurants and the Good. bars. Okay. How is the Highlands doing? They're all, I think uh, in uh, about one or two days, we're gonna hit the monthly budget. It's that busy. Uh, wow. We opened up uh, the, uh, the gaming area uh, just uh, last week and it's been very well received. The deck extension has been very well received. So we're, we're really doing well out there. Good. Any other questions? No? Okay, Rick, you're up. Rick, you're on mute. I just lost my video for a second, but I got it back. <clears throat> okay. Um, so um, the Lake Rayburn drawdown is behind us now. We just need to wait for Mother Nature to, to bring the water level back up. Uh, all the work that we were looking at getting done, some of it kind of tricky, uh, has worked out, including the um, uh, the boat ramp. Um, we, we got it widened. Um, the outflow from the overflow structure uh, needed to be re 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 rip wrapped. Try to say that, and um, and then um, locked together with concrete. We we've completed that. There was an individual doing some dredging. He is finished, um, and uh, most concerning and and what I'm most happy about was the the valve that hadn't been exercised in many, many years, we were able to get the debris removed from that intake structure. The valve exercised, it opened, it closed beautifully. We have no leaks and um, I am, uh, my blood pressure is down as a result, which uh, is, is good. So um, overall, very happy about that. The POA Rangers, um, Seasonally, we're seeing it, seeing their contacts ramp up. They they not only um, patrol the lakes, but also um, some of our trails and uh, parking areas. Um, the uh, provide some assistance out at the the campground, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so uh, from February, we're up about 250 contacts to 1,252. We removed 109 people compared to 20 last month. 
contacts by boat were at 175 as compared to 38 in the previous month. And the time spent on the water is also increasing 39.5 uh, compared to 29.25 last month. So we'll continue to see that going up. The lakes are getting busy. Um, Tanier Creek continues to have full parking on most pleasant days, uh, even, even during the week. Um, we brought back an, an additional ranger from last fall. He started April 1st. We have two really good candidates for the remaining two positions, um, and they'll be filled and in, in going by May 1st. <clears throat> The small dog park, we had concrete forms installed today. And while we were on this meeting, I just got confirmation that sod is being delivered tomorrow and we'll, we will get that laid so that we're making good progress there. Um, then we just need to wait for it to take root and we'll be open by um, first part of June. We're also doing some fertilizing and overseeding at the large dog park tomorrow, which will require us to be, to have that park closed until 10 a.m. Um, but then, but then we'll be able to reopen. The Lake Ann sinkhole, we continue to investigate that. Uh, we met with engineers last week um, to direct us on how to accomplish filling the sinkhole. The first part of it was, was mapping what we had. And now we're, um, we're, we're, figuring out how to go about doing it. So that's uh, ongoing and we'll, we're gonna get that uh, done here real soon. Um, our spring electrofishing starts tonight, weather permitting. I know there's the possibility of some storms. So um, there will be loud noises and bright lights for the next uh, couple of weeks on the lakes. Our um, saw guy fry have all hatched and they're being placed in the Berksdale golf ponds uh, we've been working on that today and additionally tomorrow. We also are doing uh, black crappie in two of our ponds and we've obtained all of our brood stock and got those placed as well. Um, let's see, I had some responses to some of the other uh, um, concerns that were raised. Uh, the shrubbery at Tanyard Creek, um, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of that is Nandina, which has mm -hmm. suffered from um, winter winter damage. Mm -hmm. That that usually comes back from the base, um, and I'm um, so we're kind of waiting to see if we get any green up before we replace it. Um, we do understand that Carol at the gun range needs some help, especially now that we're getting into a busy season and we're going to provide that for him. Um, and the, the fish buckets being full this time of the year, that's, that's just the way things are. We, 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 um, we empty those out at least once a day. And, um, and, and so, uh, between now and in June, we'll continue to see a lot of fish harvest. Um, and I'll have a look at that asphalt at Tanya Creek and see what we can do there. And um, that's all I have. Good. Thank you, Rick. Any questions? Good, John. Over at the gun range. So Gary, you could have pretty much my report. Uh, there's not an incredible amount to report on, uh, but as you said, uh, rifle pistol is, is pretty steady. Uh, this past weekend was actually fairly busy uh, compared to most weekends that we've had here lately. Uh, of course, it was pretty weather too. Uh, but it is slowing, uh, we think in large part due to just not being able to find ammunition right now. Um, but the good news is over at Trap and Skeet, uh, April is generally one of our busiest months. Uh, it, it usually ranked third as far as how busy it's going to be. Uh, but this is our jumping off point. This is where we, we pretty much expect to be super busy from now until about July. We'll slack off a couple of months and then uh, and then it gets really busy through the fall uh, just because of weather. Uh, we did have a, a really good shoot uh, ATA yesterday. Uh, I, I believe there were 90 shooters. Uh, so we, we were a little short. They were expecting about 100. But, but 90 is still a really good first shoot for the year. So... Uh, that went really well. 
Uh, and then also our, our, our classes are all full in April and I've added, <coughs> excuse me, I've added extras uh, for the beginning of May. Uh, I believe they're probably gonna fill up too. So uh, everything's full. So if, if you wanna get into a class, probably start looking at late May or June as of right now. And that is all I've got. Super, any questions? John, I have a question about the ammunition. Is that, is that nationwide or is it just Arkansas, the, the lack of ammunition? Is that? It, it is nationwide, coast to coast. Uh, okay. uh, some things are a little harder to find than others. Uh, even, but even trap and skeet ammo, uh, shotgun shells and stuff like that is, is just getting really hard to find now. Uh, we, we, have a supply of shotgun shells that we were selling, uh, but we have run out and now I'm trying to find them as well. Uh, just so, you know, we'll have some to sell with our rental guns. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You are Any welcome. Questions? Any questions? Joan, you're up. Um, well, all the amenity report um, talked about all that's going on, but just briefly, um, just want to recap, we had our curbside egg hunt the Saturday before Easter, and the bunny who uh, is out there live greeting the children may or may not be on this call. I'm just saying. She is. She is. <laughs> but we made a lot of families and kids happy. Um, we weren't quite as busy as the year before. The good news about that is the bunny had ample time to interact because um, when the cars are rolling through really fast, they only get a, you know, a nanosecond with the bunny. So the bunny uh, comes over by the car and interacts and uh, lots of smiles and lots of uh, good things. So the team did a great job with that. Um, Debbie mentioned the pickleball courts, just to give you a little bit more detail. Um, this time of year, the resurfacing vendors are all very busy, but I just got word today that uh, weather pending this week, they'll start putting down what you will know as the paint and the colors to make it look like a court. Um, and, uh, you know, again, weather depending, we then put the posts up in the net. Hopefully by the end of the month, um, the courts will be playable. So that's exciting. Um, mini golf, uh, we actually had a meeting today and we're meeting again tomorrow. We are laying out what the course is gonna look like with the features and all that. Um, Max did a great job um, doing some of the concrete work. Scott mentioned some of the repairs. Um, so that's pretty much curing now. So again, um, that, that project is moving along well and will be ready for prime time very soon. Um, Jessica and I are um, getting ready for the pools and the beach to be open. Jessica's been working hard on hiring all our seasonal lifeguards. Um, and um, I'm going to throw to her. She, at the end, she'll talk a little bit about um, how we do our summer sign-up day and how we're doing that this year. Campground is very busy. Um, we have been sold out most weekends, and uh, we're having a record month. Well, we have a record month in March, and um, it's a little early for April, but it's looking good. Um, the trails continue, especially the, what is known as the Blowing Springs Trail, which is the connector to the Razorback. Um, lots of intricacies going through that front part of the park, so that work continues. Um, but as many of you know, um, we think that whole stretch will be ready um, by end of May. That's the goal anyway. Um, I'm going to throw to Jessica, and she'll mention a little bit about what we're doing as we move um, to our uh, summer camps and um, things that are going on at the outdoor pool. Hey, Joan, I have one question. Um, do you think we will bring back yoga classes once COVID issues are cleared up? Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. If you're talking about the free yoga class, yeah. Uh, uh, remains to be seen. I mean, yes, if COVID was a non-issue, yes, but right now, 50 people in the auditorium, probably not. But yeah. again, um, we have three yoga classes a week that we're currently running, 
and uh, we hope to do yoga on the beach too. So Good. while it's not a free class, we have plenty of opportunity. Good. Okay, super. Thank you. All righty. Um, I just got an email um, about the Kingsdale pool. The eco finish on the inside will begin tomorrow. So that'll be probably go into early part of next week, but it looks like seven, eight working days as long as uh, we don't get a lot of rain tonight. Um, so that'll start. And as far as the summer schedule, yeah, we're gearing up. We have a lot of returning lifeguards, eight, which is the most wow. I've had since I've been here. So that's, that's awesome. Um, so people will be seeing familiar faces at the pools and uh, at the beach. Uh, May 1st, uh, we put out in the connections um, last month, May 1st is going to be the sign up day for we're going to have the swim lessons are back uh, at Kings, we're going to have some at Kingsdale and at Metfield. Um, we're also going to have toddler and me, um, where the parent is going to get in the water, we're going to have a session of that that's going to run. Um, we will also have sign up. You can sign up for tennis camp, paddleboard camp that same day. And uh, just in case anybody didn't see, it's at 2 p.m. at Reardon Hall on Saturday, May 1st. And the reason it's at 2 p.m. is because Reardon will close and we'll reopen at 2 for those people who want to come into the auditorium and we'll be spaced out and then come sign up and sign their, their children up or their grandchildren. Um, but yeah, we're in swim team as well. Swim team is already uh, filling up pretty good. So I don't know the exact number on that, but um, it usually fills up. So uh, it's gonna be a busy summer and we're glad. So I think we'll be really busy with swim lessons. That, that's one that people were begging to get last year. So, so we'll be ready. And that's all from me. Any questions? Judy, I think you're on, aren't you? Yes, I'm here. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, not too much. I think the only thing that I had to add is that uh, we did get the plaque for the um, National Register. So you can be looking for that at the Country Club to be um, displayed here in the new Tommy Lee is working on that. But um, other than that, you guys covered it all. Any questions? Just so we review, we're looking for three to maybe four members for our new committee, for the committee for uh, this next coming year. And if everyone could kind of snoop around and look around and talk about it, that would be great. Plus, if they want to, if you want to consider being chairperson, vice chair, or secretary, that would be wonderful. Also, um, we did have everyone on board. So we had a quorum today. So there will be minutes um, distributed. Any questions at all? The next meeting will be May 10th, at which time we're going to ask our potential new members to join us so that they can become familiar with us and we can become familiar with them. No questions? Okay, thank you all for joining us and we will see you all on May 10th and hopefully in the boardroom. I'm sure that Gary will let our, uh, Gary, um, help me, Chris. Yes. Chris, thank you very much. That Chris will let us know if it's gonna be in the boardroom, but hopefully we can have it in the boardroom. Thank you all.